Hi everyone and welcome to my garden box and welcome back to Seaside Lane. I am Morgan Lane. I am a wife to a fireman for almost 11 years now. I am a mama to three elementary age girls and hopefully I am an encouraging voice that you can clean along with or do your household tasks with as we dive into God's Word together. Today we're going to do some tasks to not only refresh our homes but also to uplift our hearts and I'll be drying out some basil that I picked this morning and tackling some of the household daily chores like laundry, dishes, cleaning off the table, cutting some flowers, and then sharing a little bit of Bible art, which is less painting today and more a funny situation about a label maker and my husband, which will be on the Bible verse of Hebrews 13 verse 4, which says, Marriage is to be held in honor among all. So hopefully you will join me for this rest of this time and we can chat about the beautiful covenant of marriage and how it is such a pre precious gift and my hope is to encourage you to make your home a haven for your family but to also make your heart a haven full of peace in the love of Christ and I hope you join me like this guy. I have discovered the more that I cut back my basil, the more happy it grows. So I have found a way to dry it out at 200 degrees and I just kind of feel it until there's no more moisture in it and once it is dry I crunch it and put it in that container to use it in mostly pasta because we eat a lot of spaghetti. As I finish the basil and jump into swapping laundry, I was asking the Lord what to chat about as I did my chores with you all. In marriage just kept popping up. It was in my Devo about the Hebrews verse and I had listened to a podcast that my husband and I send clips back and forth to each other and just so many different little things happened throughout the week. Hi, I'm Morgan. And so marriage it is and I know it's sort of, it's our society. So the podcast I was listening to was talking about how over 50% of women aged 20 to 40, I don't know if this is just in America or if it's worldwide, but he was just talking about how the institution of marriage is basically outdated and how women from that age of 20 to 40, like over a little over 50% of them don't see it as having like a value or a status as it did, did before. And so, I don't know, I listened to this whole podcast in my, my curiosity was sparked. So I have a load of hockey gear to do and a load of rags to do, and then I was going to wipe down the laundry room. But so I always was taught, even as a little girl, I had an incredible middle school youth pastor, high school youth pastor, and college pastors and leaders that just always were so open about how beautiful marriage was and how sacred it is, and that they would they would totally advocate the truth of of marriage and the importance of it and the way the Lord made men and women and how you can fight daily together and put the work in and how it's a covenant. It's not just a piece of paper with the government. It's not just something people do when they meet a boy if they're a girl and they get married and how it is really a covenant between the Lord and, and the examples of it, of your husband being like the church and like Christ and of you serving each other daily. So we are three minutes in. If you have not gotten up to do something, do so today. Try to tidy something and get something organized to help ease your brain and your mind as you you clean and listen to God's word. So this is such a huge topic to kind of just talk about in a 15 minute fun little kind of cheesy cleaning video. But I was talking about it with my husband. I was like, there's so many different ways. And he's like, don't forget to talk about to the young woman who might click on this, who's in middle school, high school, college, seeking the Lord, seeking for their spouse almost, or just waiting and being patient and just, he's like, tell them truth about cultivating your heart and about cultivating it to be different and to, to attract the type of man of, of being like a rare heart that's so tethered to God that the things you value of loving the Lord will attract the man that values the same things that you do. Some have been wounded by the institution of marriage, of grandparents, of parents, of your own spouse, of friends, of situations that have been full of heartbreak. And I have been praying for you as I was doing my chores and doing things because 
Only as a friend have I been in the perspective of seeing these situations. The Lord has definitely blessed us with two parents that have been in love for decades, Kayla's parents and my parents, and we have had that amazing example of loving through thick and thin and through all the quirks of each other. And that is a gift we have, but I know that is not for everybody. So I have been praying that if this strikes a wound of talking about marriage while we cling to, I'm just praying for your heart and that the Lord would soften you and love on you as you listen and just see those marriages around you that hopefully are a light and are an example of the way that Christ loves the church. So my personal experience is just, I've seen how marriage is divinely planned and purpose-filled, and I think it is honestly the greatest gift on this side of heaven that the Lord has given me to have my husband as my helper, and how just to see how husband and wife can complement each other so well in like their divinely inspired roles and as a system and work so well together, even though we're so different. And I was thinking about how before I got married or right at the beginning of getting married, my husband and I, we read the the books Captivating and Wild at Heart by the Eldridge couple. And one is all just about like a woman and being captivating a woman's soul and then the man and being wild at heart. So that is an amazing resource if you are looking for something as well as Praying for Your Future Husband by Robin Jones Gunn. I read that as well. I remember my desk was stacked with books in college when I had had met my husband and I was desiring just to grow and learn about this exciting thing that the Lord was going to bless me with. And if you have not caught on or have not seen past videos of Seaside Lane, I am an avid reader, so I love reading. This past week, since my last Golden Retriever, The Golden Rule video, I have decided to pick up the second to last Little House on the Prairie series book. And as I read it this week, I was just kind of smiling ear to ear and I was talking to my daughter about it. And here it is on my nightstand, Devotion, Clean Socks the last book. It was called These Happy Golden Years. And I was smiling as well because this was all about Laura as she's being courted, as she gets engaged, and then the very last chapter is as she gets married. A lot of you think of like the little house on the prairie, her and her sisters in the woods, but this one is definitely at the end of the series where she is basically preparing to be a wife. And I was smiling and laughing as I was reading it and how she's 15 and 16 and then three years later she marries her husband I believe when she's like 18 or 19 and I have a very similar story as well so I even though I was teasing that it's the 1850s but I can relate to Laura so much and that it's just fun so if you haven't read those go back and read those as well with all the other things I have recommended as books so I finished laundry and dishes. Today was not a deep cleaning day. It was a get everything clean day. Wipe off the table. And I was going to cut some flowers. I like to buy flowers, but if there are none, then I go out and just trim a few. And I have this flame of the woods bush with these bright red flowers. And I will cut it and just put it in a jar because it's the little things like flowers and candles and a warm drink that can make all the difference in a homemaking day of the same routines that sometimes seem like they're the same over and over. The other morning at church when I found my friends looked at me and she said something about having a rough week but she smiled and she's just like I have never known Christ more than the way my husband has loved me and carried me this week and it stuck with me. It was just some little comment of saying like hi how was your week and walking past each other but just that she was encouraged. So I will tell you as I put these flowers in the vase, my most recent grumpy mom story is I was having one of those days, just a rough, a rough day. My husband always says, you can't cherish the beautiful and easy and great days without having one of those rough days thrown in between. So it was just one of those rough days. The struggle was real. And my husband needed to run some errands and to go drop off pick up a fire uniform at the firehouse and go out. So I was kind of just, just, I was silent. He left to go do his errands and I routinely was going to get our girls ready for bed. We did our snack. We were getting pajamas and bath and all that for the evening. And I was reading to my youngest daughter who is five and we were laying in bed and 
I just keep thinking in my head, man, I screwed up. Little flowers, I was a grouch today to my husband and a little bit to my family. And I was laying in the bed reading her story routinely and my husband walked in and I heard the garage door and I thought, oh, like, I don't know if he's going to help me. I don't know what kind of mood he's going to be in because of my mood and this and that. And he walked in with a huge bouquet of roses and just handed it to me as we were snuggled in bed with my little one. And I was like, that is unconditional love. And there are men out there, if you have not been married, who pursue in love like we are 11 years in and I feel the butterflies still almost weekly with just just somebody that will love you and pursue you and even on your worst day will see you at your best and who you are so I am done with chores I'm gonna jump into Bible time now and my husband loves to label things he has this label maker and he got it up and working again like this is the tape bucket duct tape masking tape painters tape dry you need tape every kind of tape is labeled insert book he labeled my books right behind the boots if you are a a spouse of a first responder I have put in some little prayers in there so he goes babe do you need a label I said, no, I don't need a label. I don't need a label. That's not really my personality. I don't need a label for anything. I finally asked for a label for my dried basil, so he wrote mom's basil. But a few minutes later, he came back in and he said, I don't, I know you don't need a label, but I made you some. And then he handed me this very long strip of all these things. I had to peel some off because it was his prevalent love. You're my happiest place on earth confessions. So I put the you know, the appropriate ones on here to put in my Bible. And there is mom's basil. And I was just laughing because his personality loves organization and mine is very artistic and very free, but he wanted to make me some labels. And that just made my day. So the Bible verse I had paid in in blue was Matthew chapter 19, verse number five. It says, hold fast to his wife and the two shall become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. What therefore God has joined together, let no man separate. And so I wanted to, the night before I had filmed this, we had gone to a baseball game. The first one in nine years, because when you have kids, was my daughter was nine last time I had went, and we just have not gone out to a baseball game. We enjoy hockey a lot, but we decided to go to a baseball game this week, and so I decided to print out the photo of us in the stadium that I snapped while we were there and I wanted to put it with all his sticky labels that he made about me next to this verse about marriage about what God has joined together let no man separate because I felt like it was fitting I wanted to put these somewhere special because I was like he took the time and it was a lot of love to list these different things and I don't know what to do with my labels and as you know if you have been on here before I love to just kind of Bible journal phases and seasons of life and things that the Lord is speaking to me and teaching to me. So if you haven't seen this before, this is called an interleaved journaling Bible, which means that there is one blank page to art, doodle, sermon notes, prayer for every page of scripture. Some of them are also journaling Bibles that have the scripture and a column on the side. So there was the marriage verse I had in my Devo with columns on the side and you can journal on the side. You can find these all over, most bookstores, Amazon, whatnot. But this is how I connect and this is what I love to do is share with you guys that diving into God's word does not have to be complicated, it doesn't have to be scary, it doesn't have to be routine or rigid that I am a very artsy person and when I journal and pray and read the Lord molds and shapes me and this is how I do it. So my desire on this channel too is to, for you to see that and to maybe be interested in it as well. So then I wrote the verse and then I wrote a bunch of little verses about marriage underneath it. There's so many, Proverbs 18, 22, Ephesians 5, 25, 1 Corinthians. I wrote them all in verses that I had read about just the institution of marriage and how God feels about it. And I had read them and this was a very quick little Bible page. I had a teacher conference to go to for my daughter. So this was not an artistic expression. This was just getting all the things in. And some days that is just how it is. So I am just going to end in a prayer unscripted just for the Lord of 
God, I thank you for this time. I thank you for the women that have watched this. I pray for their hearts that we would just soften our hearts towards you and towards our husbands and towards our families. And I also pray over the men of the households of these women and that you would strengthen them and grow them in you and help them to lead their families and to lead and love their wives the best that they can. God, I pray for godly Christian marriages to be a shining example and a light to the world that all may know who Jesus is. Amen.